I've recently been researching more into the lives of the saints, and I've come across many whose bodies have been said to be incorrupt Mm -hmm. even many years after death. Can you explain more about this miracle and how it relates to theology of the body? I can explain how it relates to theology of the body. I can't explain the miracle, because (laughs) if you could explain the miracle, it wouldn't be a miracle. Mm. Um, But yes, it's, it's a sanctity is a matter of body and soul. We tend to think of um, holiness as merely something spiritual. Mm -hmm. But John Paul II says, holiness is what enables us to live the body fully. And holiness is to become a sincere gift to another, and we do that through the body. The ultimate act of holiness that I mean, ultimate, as in this is the peak expression of holiness ever expressed on planet Earth, is Christ saying to his bride, this is my body given up for you. Mm-hmm. So holiness is a, is a you have, what you have is a holy person, let's put it that way. Mm. Persons are holy, and a human person is a unity of body and soul. It's not just the soul that's holy, it's the person that's holy. And Thomas Aquinas says, the soul is not I. I am not merely my soul. I'm not a spiritual person trapped in a body. I'm a human person, and a human person is the marriage of body and soul. The separation of body and soul that happens at death is is not natural. I mean, it's natural in the sense, if you're using that word like it happens to everybody, But it's not natural in the sense that it's in keeping with God's plan for human nature Mm -hmm. to separate the body and the soul. And we have this destiny, not just of an immortal soul that will live forever with God, we believe in the resurrection of our bodies. So this special grace that is given to certain saints, certainly not all saints, but certain saints where they're bodies are dug up even years later, centuries later sometimes, and the body is has not decayed in the normal way that you would expect. This is a mark of that person's holiness. It's a mark of the integrity of body and soul. Uh, I'm reminded of the scripture that uh, you will not allow your beloved to see decay. Right? That's in the Psalms of the Old Testament, mm-hmm. and that's often referred to as an Old Testament prophecy of Christ's resurrection. You will not allow your beloved to see decay right. um, or to see corruption would be another translation. So these saints whose bodies do not corrupt, it's, uh, it's, it's part of that promise, that pledge of a future resurrection. And mm-hmm. I believe it's a reminder to us, if I were to venture a theory as to why does God do this for certain saints, I would say... It's a reminder to us that our hope is not only that we live spiritually forever, right? Every religion on the planet that has a vision of an afterlife believes that we continue in some spiritual way, but this is, here I'm quoting from the Catechism, but how can we believe, right? The Catechism puts it in a question, how can we believe that this body so clearly mortal could rise to everlasting life. How could we believe that? Well, we believe it because it happened to Christ. Mm -hmm. And we also have hints of it or or little foreshadowings of it, I believe, in these certain cases where saints' bodies are incorrupt. Yeah. And I think when I think about it, I I think about how um, the whole appreciation of saints is meant to encourage our faith. You know, it's meant to strengthen the faith of the body of Christ. And remembering people whose lives have made a big impact allows their impact to reach more people when we uh, when we write about their lives or talk about them or more recent people share photos or um, all of that. I think that an incorrupt body is also something that calls our attention to a person's life. Yes, so, yes. so that we can appreciate how deep their love for the Lord was when they lived and that they are in heaven now loving him and longing for us to be there in that communion. So it's it it's uh 
honored by people, not because it's proof that this person is more holy than someone right. whose body right. decays normally, um, but just that it's one of the many ways that we can have our hearts lifted up towards the miraculous and the reality of things beyond the normal earthly realm, I think. Yeah, and something you just said there just sparked something in, in my thinking that we appreciate the saints because of how they love. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the mark of a saint. But how they love is always in and through the body. Yeah. You'll remember our, our friend, of course, Jackie Logue and her husband, mm -hmm. Bill, who died of brain cancer years ago. Mm -hmm. And I often tell this story to my students mm -hmm. that when her husband died, she had well-meaning but very misguided friends telling her things. Oh, oh I got to rewind. Part of the story was when her husband died, she was haunted in the days after his burial, haunted by the thought that his body was decaying in the ground. Mm -hmm. And it kept her up at night and, and it was a haunting thought mm -hmm. to her. And she had well-meaning but misguided friends who would say things to her like, but that's just his body. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that, the soul lives forever. Mm -hmm. And she had a proper Catholic sensibility in the way she responded. And she said, but that's the body that loved me. Mm -hmm. And that's the body I loved. And yeah. it, that's the body through which we conceived all our children. Right. And it's rotting in the ground and it's tearing me apart. Mm -hmm. She's exactly right. That's what happens at death. We get torn apart. Mm -hmm. The body and the soul, the separation right. is, is not normal. It's not natural. I love uh, what Peter Kreef says. Um, he says, when the body and the soul separate at death, we have a freak. We have a monster. This is not, this is not normal. This is not, we have an obscenity, he said. Uh, it's, it, is, it is obscene. This se death is obscene. The separation of body and soul is obscene. And when he says we have a freak, we have a monster, what did he mean? He said, these are the things of which our, our horror movies are made, mm. ghosts and corpses. Mm. I always thought that was a fascinating insight. Why do ghosts and cor corpses populate our horror movies? Because right. the separation of body and soul is literally horrifying. The good news is that Christ conquered that horror by rising from the dead. And the way we get around, or the way we, we, the way we live with that horror that body and soul separate at death is not by pretending that the body doesn't matter and we're just spirits trapped in bodies and the body's a prison and we, we, liberate, we get liberated from the prison of the body when we die. That was a platonic thought from the philosopher Plato. Right. It's not a Christian thought. The, the way we overcome this horror is not by spiritualizing our personhood, but by opening the cry of our heart for everlasting life to the one who came in the flesh to grant us everlasting life in the flesh. Mm. Wendy, I cannot wait. <laughs> I mean, I have to wait. That's a funny expression, I cannot wait. <laughs> well, you have to. Um, but we know what we mean. I can't, I, I, I'm, the thought of embracing your glorified body mm. with my glorified body. Yeah. That is it's an awesome thought. Yeah. Do you remember that I recently sent you an article about um, a foundress of a religious oh, yeah, yeah. order whose body was being moved yes. recently and found was to found incorrupt. to be incorrupt? So this is, I think, on people's minds a little bit right now. This is so recent. And she was um, a nun who lived it all in the 20th century. Um, she was an African American, mm -hmm. and her name was Wilhelmina Lancaster. Oh, can you tell that story about Wilhelmina? Oh, yeah. So there was a story I read in an article about her that um, she lived during a time when her order, um, that the order that she had joined as a young woman, um, stopped wearing habits and, uh, during, uh, you know, post Vatican II, I guess. But she kept wearing her habit. She did not think it was a good move of the order. And someone, I think another member of her order, 
after some time, challenged her, are you going to keep wearing that thing? And and according to this uh, quote from a book about her life, it said that she said, yes, I am. My name is Will Hell Mina. I have a hell of a will and I mean it. <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> Feisty nuns. Yeah, Woo. so that's that's a special one. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click like and subscribe and please leave a comment. If you'd like to learn more about the Theology of the Body, click on the link TOB for free. We will send you three free sessions to our introductory course. You can also learn about our patron community and become part of a global community of men and women who are learning, living, and sharing this vision. And hey, check out our events calendar. We might be coming to an area near you very soon.